Recently on X, I put up this post in which I described what I believe to be the way the average person in England is feeling about now. My primary point was how our country has changed and not from the better, and I got a lot of pushback from credentialed liberal experts that assured me, no, the country has always been this miserable. I was guilty of mythologizing the past. Mass immigration has, in my opinion, destroyed a delicate social fabric that took centuries to weave and merely two decades to ruin. What once felt like home to us now feels like a way station for millions of global nomads. People, I think, therefore are naturally feeling on their guard, unsettled. They have a colder disposition and a lack of love for the place in which they live and the people who live alongside them. They are no longer, as I put it in my essay, relaxed and at their ease. There is a perpetual sense of tension in the air, and you can see it on people's faces as they walk past on the street. Everyone looks downcast, as if there's some invisible, oppressive force coming down on them while they scurry around in the ruins of their decaying civilization. People don't seem at their ease anymore, and they certainly don't seem happy. And the thing is, the numbers on this are in. When asked, the British people will self-report high feelings of anxiety and a generally gloomy outlook. One example can be found in the Office of National Statistics' own surveys, where between April 2022 and March 2023, when asked, how anxious do you feel yesterday? Over 40% of people reported feeling a medium or high level of anxiety. A non-profit called Sapiens Labs published their fourth annual report, Mental State of the World, which included the results of a survey that included 500,000 people across 71 countries. They calculate a mental health quotient using a minus 100 to 200 scale, and as they tell us, the average MHQ score is 65. So, if we go through the data, we find that the United Kingdom is second to last by this metric, with a mood and outlook score of only 49 which puts us one above Uzbekistan, and significantly below Yemen, which is engaged in a civil war and has been since 2014, and Ukraine, which is currently being invaded by Russia. The happiest places in the world are, in order, the Dominican Republic, Sri Lanka, Tanzania, Panama, Malaysia, Nigeria, Venezuela, El Salvador, Costa Rica, Uruguay, Italy, Puerto Rico, and Honduras which suggests that the issue isn't one of wealth, it's one of the society itself, as each of these countries are actually well known for having strong social bonds. For years, research into the subject has found that diversity, as in the consequences of mass immigration, is damaging for the natives' own sense of community and how much they trust others. A recent meta-analysis found a, quote, statistically significant negative relationship between ethnic diversity and social trust across all studies. In the late 1990s, Tony Blair's Labour government began the liberal programme of mass immigration into Britain under the assumption that these people were fundamentally just like us and would become like us, and therefore this would provide economic growth. Things have, of course, therefore changed, but not for the better. In the 20th century, it used to be that Britain had net emigration, and half of the immigration that came in was from Ireland. But for some reason, the Conservative Party decided they would adopt the Blairite worldview and import over a million foreigners a year into Britain for the past three years consecutively, mostly from non-European countries. If we look at the census data, we can see that we are simply losing England itself in this apparently unstoppable tidal wave of immigration, and we are not seeing any corresponding economic growth to match it. In fact, we have apparently just squeaked out of a recession by an astounding 0.2%. This, naturally, is putting insane demands on services and benefits, it's depressing wages, and causing skyrocketing housing costs. Try getting an NHS appointment in a timely fashion, and you'll likely join one of the 7.5 million people, that's 12% of the country, who are currently on a waiting list. But we are far more reluctant to talk about the psychic damage that this is doing to us, and I think this is one of the reasons that people are just far less happy than they were in the past. 
In this, I am doing little more than echoing George Orwell's views in his essay England, Your England, in which he characterises the gentleness of England as its most marked characteristic and one I think we have lost. As I said, I received a lot of pushback to this from liberal professors and leftist pseudo-historians. They assured me that such an idyllic time in English history never did exist, and that there were problems in the past just like there are now, and so this is all a misremembered nostalgic fantasy that we are apparently all buying into. But all of these have rather missed the point of what I said. I did not say that there were not problems. I said that the problems happened against the backdrop of a tightly knit, high-trust society, and that mass immigration had destroyed that, which makes the current problems sting all the more viciously. We can see, from the Mental State of the World report, that people don't actually need wealth to be happy. What they need is one another, and to have a place in which they feel they belong, in which things they feel are being done properly. However, in England, things are no longer settled and secure because of the sheer number of strangers who are in our midst. We do not know what their intentions are, and we don't find their behaviour predictable. They are odd, and don't seem to show our way of life the respect we feel it deserves. But we don't actually need data to validate this point. We can see it in our daily lives. We can feel it when we walk around. We can look at footage of people from the last century and notice that they just seem so much more relaxed as they walk around, with a distinct lack of tension in their faces. I myself was an adult before mass immigration impacted this country. That's how recent this is. I remember what it used to be like. You can hear old people saying things like, well, we never had to used to lock our doors when we were young, or when we were young, we'd just go out all day, but now things aren't like that. Now people are worried, they're suspicious, they're cautious. They don't look to the future with optimism, and they look to their present circumstances with sadness. So why would the liberal professors feel the need to deny this obvious lived reality and declare that, in fact, the past was worse than the way things are today? Everyone can see the decline. Why are they denying that in the face of the overwhelming evidence? Well, I think it comes down to the liberal narrative of progress. It's Tony Blair's liberal reforms which changed Britain into the state it's in today. And liberalism takes for its model of history what is known as Whig historiography. This is the theory that history is fundamentally linear. That progress means an upward march into the future in which things get steadily and inevitably better. However... If things aren't getting better, and in fact are tangibly worse than before, then the liberal interpretation of history is revealed to be incorrect. And if that pillar is wrong, what else might liberals believe which is also untrue? Are we really all just the same? Is diversity our strength? Can there be such a thing as a universal ideology? Are there non-material things which lie outside of the horizon of the liberals' vision, which have core value to the human condition that the liberals themselves have been consciously unmaking while pursuing a foolhardy utopian agenda. Was the entire liberal project and everything that came with it actually a mistake? Have our liberal politicians and professors, under the guise of making the world a better place, been in the business of proactively destroying the inherited social wealth of generations out of their blind obedience to a doctrine that is slowly revealing itself to be built on lies. If things are getting worse as they get more liberal, then perhaps that is the case. And now you see why things must have been worse in the past. It's unthinkable that they could have been better.